Hello everyone, and today here we are here discussing about uh, the experience at ISI Delhi. So welcome, De Devjeet. Good morning, ma'am. Very good morning. Good so, uh, Devjeet, let's start by how long did it take when you first went to ISI Delhi to sink in? Okay, now I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it almost took uh, one semester. I mean, uh, wow. like we went, yeah, because I had to adjust the course. The uh, it was rigorous and uh, just meeting with the people and getting to know yeah. all of them and yeah. finally adjust. Finally, uh, just knowing the fact that I am now with high SI and I have to survive and working on it. Yeah, it, it was a it was a, a tough it was a rough start at the beginning, but eventually uh, the profs and the I, I mean the friends I have there they are so cool, calm and yeah, uh, they, especially the people. I mean they said just relax, everything will uh, you can do it and like two three months it took and then it was okay for me. Right. So and your batch strength at ISI Delhi is what 30, 35 people. We are 31 of them. 31. 31. Okay. Yeah. And diverse backgrounds from all over India. Yeah, all over India. Yeah. You have from, I mean, it was the first time I had that experience. It, first of all, it was all over from India and then somewhere, somewhere from IIT, somewhere from uh, uh, DU, uh, Delhi University, somewhere from other colleges. Yeah. Some, of, some of them were from other engineering backgrounds. Yeah. 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 And then I also had Kabir. He was from English background. Yeah. Who? Kabir. Oh, Kabir Chatterjee. Yeah. 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 He was, a, he must be the most unique background ever in ISI, yeah, English honors. <laughs> yeah. But he's equally good there as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He worked hard, he proved himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh how is the how is the campus at ISI? Is it a fancy campus or is it like you know a simple campus? Well, uh, overall it's a simple uh, campus, but yeah, I mean it's full of uh, trees and uh, and, and the most unique thing is the, the classrooms there and uh, and there's a board and the classrooms is uh, normally one classroom is open is is open twenty four seven and the uh, the boards are in the classroom so at any time you have something working in your mind you can just go to the classroom and take the chalk and start scribbling <laughs> other than that, it's very conducive for study and then uh it's it's, it's, it's a simple campus it's a small campus a quiet okay. campus but yeah it's uh, full of this lush greenery. So how many other courses are running in the ISI campus besides MSQE? Well, besides MSQE there is MSTAT but it only happens for the first year. I mean those who takes uh, the masters uh, of statistics those yeah. who enroll. Yeah, those uh, who is enrolled for the first year and the second year, they go to ISA Calcutta. Other than that, we have the PhD students who are uh, doing the research in PhD. economics and maths. Yeah. Okay, and, and that's it. Other than that, uh, there is a like a six sigma or some certification course that I'm not aware of. Okay. But yeah, I mean, the, this uh, long complete courses, these two are currently there. This so that's it. Uh, you know, so not a lot. So it's just you and the professors pretty much at the campus. Yeah. yeah. And oh, those, wow. Uh, so how, how is that? Like, are you guys, um, um, what is the interaction then? Because it's a very small campus, that means. So, you know, how was the interaction then between the faculty of the classes? I mean, you know, during the classes, of course, is there any interaction, any chance of, you know, any club or any, you know, activity that you guys do together where you get to interact with the faculty outside of the class hours? Yeah, yeah, man, that's one of the most interesting things because the uh, the classes and the profs, uh, faculty's offices, they're in the same building. So, and uh, often you see the, I mean, a, a lot of our profs just stay in the campus itself. Yeah. And often uh, when you are uh, going to the hostel, uh, I get to see uh, two or three profs. And, and the most imp interesting thing is if uh, professors are there on the campus only, I mean, their children, I mean, their families. So whenever, uh, uh, I'm, for example, I'm going to the uh, hostel or I'm going to the canteen for my lunch and I meet up with one of them. I mean, we have the same lunch hours. They, they, uh, so yeah, meeting with the profs, I mean, it's not a problem at all. You just mail them that I want to meet with you and they'll give you a time. And in fact, if you even, I mean, they are also on the campus uh, roaming here and there. So you can just approach to one of them and have a talk. I mean, it's very open. It's very open. I mean, there's no uh, bounds. I mean, uh, for uh, I mean, uh, there are a few profs I know that uh, they are very happy in fact meeting with students. I mean, for example, I'm going to my room and uh, I keep come across him and we have a conversation for 10, 15 minutes, like informal. It's, yeah, and other than that, you can also approach to their uh, to their offices by dropping a mail. That's also possible. So it's uh, yeah. Wow, that's so nice. I mean, you get so that so you get a lot of interaction with the faculty, and you know a lot of just general guidance that you know this is what I'm thinking, or you know, this is what I want to pursue. So, for example, if you want to pursue a PhD, there'll be so much guidance because you know they're they're there in the campus. They've been th been through that. They can guide you what courses, where to apply, which department is good. So much guidance can go around because there's so much time on the hands. So that is really nice to hear. Um, exactly. I mean, the profs they, they themselves favor research a lot. So if you yeah. have one to pursue in future, you can just approach to them and have a conversation. That's good. Yeah. So um, besides like this, I mean, teaching is obviously great at ISI Delhi. There is you know no question of that. And like we were just talking, that most of the old professors are still there. So that would ensure that you know the quality of teaching at ISI is and has has been taught top notch and is top notch and continues to be. So that I, uh, you know, that is not even a question that, you know, I think I will ask you that how is the teaching, but uh, in terms of like um, such a small peer group, 
is there a feeling of like competitiveness that you know we have to grab like a top job between these 30 people or is it very collaborative uh, the environment in the college no ma'am uh, i mean it's very collaborative teamwork is, is i think is it's one of the key to success there because whenever you have a question and it's, it's like tough so you, you have a group of like uh, people who are continuously thinking about that question you can go and discuss with them and come with a, come up with an answer so teamwork is has been the has been an essence there and uh, in terms of competitiveness i won't say there is much because uh, uh, given that uh, the jobs that the companies that have those they have uh, uh, i mean they all they do offer a good amount in, in terms of the compensation so everyone is yeah. assured that they will be getting they will be ending up with a good package so yeah okay, but okay. yeah being able to solve this uh, there and when and whenever you have a tough question or or even a tough problem or a decision that you have to come up uh, with a solution with you can just uh, uh, sit there and have some conversation with similar or like minded people or people having their own opinions and really is very collaborative in terms of coming up with a similar solution to a problem and of and often there are meetings i mean if some if there's something that we just cannot come up with a uh, common conclusion so we have a meeting with all of the best all of the students together in a classroom uh, physical meeting and then we can come up yeah i mean that's very nice very nice so um in just a run through of the format so i think i say and dsc have the same for format that you have your um you have your fixed courses in the first year uh, which are compulsory and then second year you have all optionals and you can choose between various kind of options uh, depending on what you like between econometrics or finance or development economics or health economics or environment economics and whatever so uh, is it it must be the same format so what kind of options uh, you know are there in the second year perhaps if you could talk a little about that yeah i mean ma'am uh, in the second year and in, in this third semester i took up i took there are a lot of options there is real analysis uh, in, in in talking about the electives yeah there is a real analysis that is being offered by the stack map unit uh, then there is me- mechanism design that's offered by uh, our etu and other than that i think uh, there is uh, this uh, for people who want to, uh, to want to go towards theory they can take up institution that's also a good course that's more based on history and all such stuff and uh, other than that uh, if i have to talk there is uh, in my second semester there was industrial organization this was uh, uh, this was the f- uh, first year and uh, yeah ma'am and there was uh, development economics this was also in the second semester uh, the, and other than that uh, yeah i mean there is also this history of economic economic thoughts is also is a great uh, option that's been offered uh, and there is also an environmental economics but i think it was in the second semester again so yeah these are uh, Right. Yeah. And so, do you guys, you know, uh, does it happen like in DCS to happen that for jobs everybody used to take uh, Ecotrix One, Ecotrix Two? You know, those are compulsory courses everybody took. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, similar thing happens happens in ISI because for jobs you need to know, you know, your uh, you need to know a bit of coding, which I've heard everybody kind of does it uh, independently. You learn coding, you do Ecotrix, and and all of that. So that happens that everybody ends up taking the econometrics courses, and then you choose other electives. Or you think that for you know getting a good job, are there any particular favorites that okay these papers you must take? Yeah, man, good question. Actually, Ecotrix uh, one that was compulsory in our second semester, so everyone took it. And in our third semester, everyone, uh, I mean, time series was there. Yeah. So if uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, except w- one or two, I think um, all of them took that course because it was important for job. So yeah, and Ecotrix two that's offered in our third semester, uh, that is it's an elective as well. I think also there, except that three or four, uh, there is, uh, I mean, most of them took it. Most of them. And, yeah, and also there's an option I forgot to mention that's behavioral economics. Yeah, that's also offered here. Right. I mean, I think it's. I think it's also unique because, uh, uh, yeah, behavioral economics. I haven't seen much in other institutes, but yeah, here behavioral no, economics. Yeah, it's also a very in okay. thing behavioral economics now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, what about uh, have you also had your placements like uh, internships and everything? Uh, did you you know how are the internships in ISI? Ma'am, uh, internship uh, is good. Uh, I mean. Uh, our juniors they uh, i think half of them have uh, secured an internship in corporates and uh, i i am not currently updated with the present situation but uh, uh, during our time the market uh, was a little bit slow and this time internships are, i mean a lot of companies have approached and uh, uh, a lot of them are also offering a good compensation i mean uh, the corporates and in terms of our placements uh, uh, like 50% of the batch they have been placed like 28 are, are sitting for placements this time and 14 have been placed and uh, Uh, this is little slower compared to previous year or uh, to our seniors and because the market is little uh, uh, down this time but yeah it will pick it up from january yeah. right so, okay there is some time yeah left. and uh, yeah so um in terms of packages so, have the packages also kind of tapered down because of the market slow down or is it the same but well, most of the uh, fast recruiters like uh, the uvs or city banks i mean they are offering the same package a uh, few uh, i mean uh, yeah it's like in the new companies they have uh, some of them have offered uh, the similar packages that 
the past recruiters used to offer. And uh, some of them had offered a little uh, lower, but all of them, they are in the same uh, interval. Can, but yeah, a few of them are uh, higher than uh, the average. But yeah, I mean, most of them are, I mean, the uh, deviation is... Uh, yeah, what is low. like the median kind of package that is going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, 16, 17. 16, 17 would be the median till now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, and what about the hostel? How is the hostel and the food and everything? And the hostel is great. I mean, uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, I say is a, a, a very, I mean, uh, it's, uh, there, there's an old hostel and there's a new hostel. And uh, uh, in, I mean, uh, there are uh, all the facilities that uh, one can uh, wish for. And uh, the, uh, uh, in terms of food, we have the uh, uh, the canteen and it's, it's like uh, they charge a nominal amount. It's like 100 rupees a day. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the uh, canteen is uh, very innovative. It's run by uh, student mess managers. I mean, it's, uh, there are two mess managers who are students who are chosen among uh, us only. Okay. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they, uh, the foods that are offered, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very innovative in the sense, for example, if we have uh, a Bengali mess manager, he chooses a, a food that's very unique uh, uh, to be not. Or if, uh, if we have a mess manager from a different part of the country, he'll choose a different uh, food. And yeah, I mean, uh, we have uh, the food is yeah the food is great and uh, I specifically like it because uh, often it happens that I, I mean and the quality of the food is also great I mean often it happens that sometimes uh, for example like two plates or uh, like three plates of uh, uh, like uh, yeah for example chicken curry is left and and it's offered at such a low price so I just go there and <laughs> make two plates yeah. 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 and also this uh, yeah also we, when we have our uh, uh, like pressures. Or cultural night, or this reunion thing. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they also cook a good amount. I mean, yeah, overall, it's a good experience. And the hostels yeah. is also, I mean, it's, it's, it has got everything that, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Devji, um, just, you know, trying to wrap this up. So, a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, that, ma'am, uh, before going to ISA, should I learn coding? Should I learn this? So, any kind of tips, um, you know, people who kind of, uh, uh, while they're doing the graduation, do you think anything that they can do that time, which will kind of help them um, or get better out of ISI or, you know, uh, do you think it gets a lot, like it gets very tough to learn coding alongside doing your entire coursework and everything? Or do you think, you know, a person should just concentrate on making it to ISI and cracking the exam and, you know, all of this can be learned later and everybody does it. So it, you know, happens together. So kind of any tip on that and in terms of communication skills also that, you know, you need to present yourself well in, in order to grab like a good job uh, post your course. So is there anything like, should that the students can look at doing before they come to ISI, uh, which might help them. Any any tips that you know you have to give like that? Uh, then I uh, personally think that uh, if a student uh, can manage both of them, mm -hmm. as well as coding and uh, also and um, it, it depends a lot on what they're going to first do in, on their future plan because uh, uh, if someone uh, wishes for like aims for research uh, as their career, yeah. they uh, can just prepare for ISI. But yeah. If, one is willing for uh, corporates and uh, willing for say for placements. Yeah, I think they can because as we are seeing now, coding, uh, machine learning, uh, these things are now earlier it used to be a trend and it used to. But now this now this thing is becoming compulsory for uh, uh, for uh, the recruiters also, uh, given the fact that a lot of the uh, companies they are expecting that you know a little of coding, a little of uh, machine learning. I mean, even if it's not a compulsory. I mean, earlier it, is, it used to be a plus that it's if you know it is beneficial, but now yeah. the thing. It's, it's becoming a little more internalized and you have to like learn it sooner or later so if one wishes to learn it before getting to ISI I mean if one can have managed and uh, make the time out for coding nice. he can, but I think uh, that these things it also it can be learned later as well because uh, three of my juniors they were also asking me that they, they are doing undergrad and they are asking me that uh, should I uh, look for an internship now or should I I mean I used to say that I didn't even knew about these internships when I was in my undergrad and the only thing that I had in mind was to get in ISI so yeah uh, it depends I mean if you wish to uh, make it into ISI and that gives you a bigger sense of relief then it's good and if you wish that because at the end there's also there's also an independence between ISI I mean just getting to ISI and, and preparing for these things because there are uh, stories where people who are not from ISI but they are good in coding and this uh, machine learning and all also has other skills that uh, is different. Uh, that's that's different from us. Right? I mean, they have also secured uh, good jobs from other institutes. So there's a sense of independence between these two. But if I have to prioritize between these two, I'll say that uh, just prepare well for us. Right? If you have, if you can, if you can make some time, surely do this and 
but right. getting to ISO should be the should be the priority, priority. Of, course, of course yes and most of the jobs are still for data data analysis and you know coding yes. and risk management and all of that most of the jobs are for that only now also ma'am it has it has, it has become a little diverse now i mean earlier it, uh, yeah data analysis and data science scientists i mean these roles are mainly there yeah risk management earlier yeah, yeah still there i mean the banks were coming there uh, but yeah. yeah for consultancy or for other roles uh, data, uh, data analysis data science this are important yeah this this they, they have this has been been there only right and, right yeah okay, okay devjit anything else that you would like you know to uh, tell us about isi before we wrap this yeah i mean ma'am uh, i was uh, recently uh, recalling the fact that about i was uh, about uh, sir he said uh, i mean he scolded me when i, I wasn't able to do one question and i uh, felt how important it was and he also uh, motivated me uh, regarding uh, isi that he himself had a story of uh, uh, of getting into isi and uh, the youtube I, I don't i could not find a video i mean i used to saw that uh, i used to saw that before i got into isi many times of of all the uh, compilation of all the testimonies of previous students from edusheer who have made into isi yeah i mean uh, yeah so um, i think you can find I, it yeah I, i mean i was looking for it but i think it is there somewhere but uh, Yeah, I used to see that video a lot and of those testimonies because, uh, unlike uh, JE or other exams who have this thing of uh, of uh, a lot of people knowing about it, given the fact that uh, Edusheer did this great job of uh, collecting all the testimonies and the students who themselves made into ISI, they motivated mm-hmm. us. I mean, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, if you work hard, there should be a reason for getting into ISI uh, because, and if you work hard for it, uh, you you make it. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I remember how hard you work. uh how many questions you solved and you know how many times you tried so i i remember that very well you know so you also you, you both of us you gave a lot of effort and i uh, uh, currently i could not recall the name of the ma'am i think you invited her from uh, stephens she taught us uh, macroeconomics indian economy for, yeah indian economy yeah, she taught us and yeah. she was she also taught us well and but mainly sir and uh, you you gave a lot of effort to ensure that i mean sir especially uh, i remember that i was seeing a video of sir in youtube uh, uh, that cobb douglas optimization earlier Uh, I mean, I used to solve every uh, sum regarding Cobb Douglas by setting up those lagrange and all that stuff. But I just saw that three-minute video and sir so just uh, gave a two-liner of how to solve it, and it was just uh, it, I, I mean, it was just amazing how 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 logically he took all that stuff to two lines. And <laughs> then I, I mean, sir, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I say you get this advantage of uh, you you get a stipend, so there's no financial burden on uh, yeah. anyone imposing, and you also get an advantage to uh, meet the best people. out there yeah. i mean uh, when you will be in that uh, community you really meet some really yeah. really smart people uh, because uh, yeah from uh, delhi university from iit from other places as well and also the fact that you get this chance to uh, study under the best faculties yeah i mean yeah. So, that peer group is very motivating like you know you won't you won't like to settle for second best once you've been in that peer group you yourself get motivated to really do well so that is i think one of the best things about going to a good institution you know i yeah. sometimes say that if i had not gone to srcc and dsc i don't know if i would have built a career or not because we are from normal business families nobody tells us ki padho aur career banao you know we are not really expected to do that i think i'm uh, in my family one of the first people to do masters and you know do something it's not necessary you know in my family so like you said peer group ke bina i don't know how much we would have uh, come ahead in life so definitely at isi uh, that peer group will always be with you they will always you know do well in their corporate jobs also so you will always have that connections and you know that so like it's um, it's really nice Yeah, exactly, ma'am. Yeah, and these connections they do matter. I mean, the the first first of all, it it will be a strong connection. You get to meet a lot of people. I say uh, they hold this uh, culture and nights. Another place where the alumni they frequently come uh, to visit. So uh, have a great conversation and also the people uh, there. So yeah, it will be a great time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Devjit. All the best. Uh, you know, for finishing your course and onwards, do a great job and a great career ahead. Looking forward, and I'm sure you're uh, you know already making your parents proud, and you will continue to do so. Thank you, ma'am. All the very best. Thank you for doing this today morning, and uh, thank you, Devjit, for coming. All right, take care. Bye bye.